you. Put us to it on. If you like it, look, I mean, that is just a mill. We're not going to be, you know, people can, well, sir, it's nice people can do you. whatever they like. Glad you're so, here. So, just wanted to. No, I think a lot of people just. Hi, how are you doing? doing? Good, thanks. Thank you. Oh, good. Great. Anyway, we'll uh, see how to start this thing off. You put that in as a stipulation. Amazing, an hour later. That day, to the side. Wow. There's two things to say. No, maybe we get more. Right. I can, you're you're finished with your glass. Yeah, you can. You, we can designate that as garbage. So, yeah, that's just. Yeah, she's here. She's here. The kids are here. Hello, everyone. And Hello. I really thank you for coming. It means a huge amount to me. It, I'm sure Caroline's looking from somewhere and means a huge amount to her. And I did want to tell you how much it's, it's meant to me to the expressions of support and love have been quite amazing. I've got to tell you, it's been overwhelming. And you only realize the effect that somebody else has on, has on, a, on the community in general in a moment like this. You don't really appreciate it fully until uh, that person's gone. And you see the effect that people um, wanted to, to uh, let you know how, how that impacted their, their lives. And Caroline certainly did that with a lot of people. And I'm not just talking to people here. There are a lot of people online watching us too. So I also want to uh, say hello to them and welcome them as part of this uh, uh, thing tonight and to thank them as well because many people who are not here tonight did a lot. They sent things, they said things, they wrote things and, and it means more than I can tell you just to know that they're there and that they care. So thank you everyone so much. Uh, you know, Caroline didn't want to have anything um, morose. She talked about funerals, you know, years ago, how she wanted it. And this is what she wanted, something like this. Had to be at sunset, it's her favorite time of day. And uh, with any luck, we'll see the, we'll get a beautiful sunset tonight with the clouds the way they are. And um, uh, this, is, this is her time, but this is her time of day. It's just what she wanted. And she wanted this kind of arrangement, semi-casual, everyone comfortable, having a good time. She didn't want people being unhappy. So this is a celebration of her life rather than anything else. Uh, and now I want to introduce a very, very special person who's a, a part of a family that's become very, very dear to us, very close to us. 
It's uh, uh, Rabbi Alter Korf, who's going to um, uh, take over from me in a moment and conduct this ceremony. Uh, we became very close friends in the time we've been here. He lives around the corner. And he's the rabbi of Chabad uh, Jewish Center of Greater St. Petersburg. And uh, it's an amazing organization, does an amazing amount of things for many, many people. And uh, I remember long ago, when we hardly had even met, uh, the rabbi showed up at the, our doorstep with, with food because he'd heard Caroline was sick. And, you know, it's, it's, it's little things like that that you remember that mean a huge amount. And it, Caroline had really wanted to have, have him officiate at our 50th anniversary. We missed it by one year. This is 49 years. But in a way, what he's going to do today is more important than that because this is something for eternity. This is for the ages and something that I'm sure she knows this matters far more than celebrating 50 years together. This is, this is about uh, eternity, like I say. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce Rabbi Alter Korf, and many of his family are here tonight as well. So it's wonderful to have them all. And uh, so please. <laughs> We're going to get a little cup of yeah. get a little chayim. Just a little wine. Yes. <coughs> just any, just whatever is quickest here. Now this will make the one. difference. Anything? No, 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 not this one, a kosher one. Here, this one, take some. There you go, thanks. Very good. Well, I'm just going to get out of the way and turn you loose. You're never at it. You're never in the way, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for your kind words. Thank you everybody who's <laughs> gathered here, came to pay respect and to honor Caroline and her beautiful life. As Tony referred to it as a celebration of life. So I want to start by making a toast to life. In Hebrew we say l'chaim, which means to life. To appreciate the life of those who are around us and to appreciate the life and the contribution that Caroline has made in this world during her time here, and all of us, her neighbors, her friends, her family, and beyond. So l'chaim. I'd like to open up with the words Baruch Dayan Ha'emet, which are Hebrew, which means that even in the, when the inevitable happens and that moment of passing, we bless the truthful judge and we humbly submit to his judgment. Today we are gathered to pay our respects to Caroline Louise Cook. In Hebrew we say Hashem Nasan, Hashem Lakach, God has given life and God has taken life. God has called her back. She completed her mission. Please give your attention to the overhead salute. We recognize that at the final moment, it's God that calls her back. And as painful as it is, we accept his judgment. Please join me in saying in Hebrew, and I'll translate it in English, which means, and please join in, blessed be the name of the Lord forever. And we say that because we know that everything that happens is by God's will. Sometimes it's pleasant and sometimes it's harder to swallow. I'm going to start with a psalm recited in English. It's Psalm 1. The praises are of man are that he did not follow the counsel of the wicked, neither did he stand in the way of the sinner, nor in the company of the scorners but his desire in the law of the Lord, and in his law and his values he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted beside 
the water, which brings forth its fruit in season, and its leaves do not wilt, and whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand up in judgment, nor shall the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. The Lord knows the ways of the righteous. I say the Lord knows the heart and spirit of Caroline. God sees into her heart and our hearts and knows the innermost thoughts and motivations. He knows the heart and spirit of Caroline is full of goodness and an elevated spirit. And if you knew Caroline, you know I'm not exaggerating. Caroline Louise Cook, daughter of Kermit and Barbara Louise DeWalt. DeWalt was born in Key West, my apologies. In the U.S. Naval Hospital, her father, Kermit, who was, a rise, who was to rise to the highest ranks and to be enlisted rank as a master chef, master chief. Caroline attended the University of South Florida where she graduated with a degree of special education. She met Tony during these years and they were married in 1973. Tony and Caroline were just shy of celebrating, as you just mentioned, their 50th wedding anniversary this August. Is it this August? Next August. One year shy, so she would, you'd be going into the 50th year. Caroline and Tony moved about quite a bit from London to Tampa, on to Chicago, then to Los Angeles, where Tony worked in the motion picture industry and for a time, Caroline also experienced its, fla its flavor working in Universal Studios in television production. And in 2017, they made the decision to move once more, thank you, back to Florida, where we had both, where we had both connected and become acquainted, and with time, the best of friends. A rabbi, a musician, and a dog met at the stop sign. <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of a joke, right? <laughs> but the truth, it is really the truth. It was our dear friend Dakota that initially made an introduction. Dakota, where are you? He's sleeping? Okay, you'll send the regards. Tony and Caroline were the best neighbors. We really enjoyed getting to know them both. Each of our life journeys eventually brought us closer together, becoming very good friends as divine providence would have it. In Jewish tradition, there is an uh, overarching value that is essential and an underlying value to all other values. It is joy and happiness. They're not seen as a bonus to a living, to a life of moral values and purpose, but rather is the only way to live a wholesome life. There's a famous Hasidic adage attributed to the holy Hasidic master of Menachem Mendel of Kutsk, who lived some 150 years ago. He said, happiness is not considered to be a mitzvah, one of the commandments, if you will. But what happiness could achieve, no other commandment in the Torah we read about, all these 613 commandments. But what happiness could achieve, no other commandment could achieve. What the virtue of happiness can bring, no other virtue can bring. Conversely, depression, melancholy is not a sin, but the damage that it can wreck is worse than any individual sin. Living with joy and happiness is not a result of success and things going our way, but it rather is a cause and a catalyst for good things to happen. Joy and happiness is a moral decision that more than any other directs a life of good standing with man and with God. What stands out to me about Caroline was she always had a vibrant smile on her face. She had an infectious energy. She was always happy, even while she was struggling with health and other issues, she was happy. She would always brush off the challenges and make a wave with her hand and smile that everything's fine, everything will be good. I remember getting a video, 
text from her on July 4th last year or two years ago of her s dancing outside over here while they were watching with the fireworks. That was the front. In the front? It was, yeah. Anyway, it was so joyous, so happy. It was just the two of them, but she was just being herself. Anyway, the cooks and the corfs made several nautical trips from right here with our great Captain Tony. And Caroline was always there to see us off, taking the best unscripted pictures and talking to us as we're going, waving us off, and there to greet us as we return to the dock. She was so happy to see us enjoying her boat and seeing people she loved get together. She was a people's person, enjoyed talking with friends and making new friends. She was very good at it. She was also very observant, watching others, connecting with them on matters that seem important to them. Some people could talk endlessly about what they're interested in. She managed to find out and figure out what interests you. We had Caroline and Tony over for dinner once during the height of COVID. We sat on our patio. It was a Shabbat dinner Friday night, right? In the heat. <laughs> we made a big mistake of not having enough ice because Caroline lots, likes lots of ice in her drinks. But she forgave us by the end of the evening. And she was talking to our children and she said the funniest statement that made no sense to us at first. She said to one of our daughters, these must be your favorite sandals. And I can see, so we couldn't understand what she meant. Like until, so she explained herself. She said, I can see that you wear those a lot. The heels are all worn down. It made a real impression on us, on Chaya and I. The care and attention that she showed to all those around her. She always had a smile for our baby Shalom. Right, Shalom? <laughs> Looking into a stroller and talking with him as he walked the neighborhood. Engaging with him in funny noises and songs when she spent time together. It felt as though she understood him and the challenges that he faced. The special education of side of her coming to the fore. We are also so fortunate to be part of this amazing Colonial Lane community. And I still recall everyone's interest in how Shalom was doing and her baby was doing and the joy of him coming home after a long stay in the NICU. I think Carolyn was doing a lot of the updating in the Colonial Lane family in our impromptu chats in the street. At the same time, I need to ask forgiveness for all our neighbors as some of our best conversations with Caroline was her rolling down her car window and schmoozing with us in the street, backing up traffic for some time. So I'm very sorry, but I must say we had some of our best chats at those times. I really miss seeing her just casually as we're walking and she's driving or vice versa. We just stop and talk for a couple of minutes. We were so blessed to have Tony and Caroline join us in South Florida for the wedding of our daughter a few months ago. While she did have some health hiccups before the wedding, and we wanted to give her her space, she insisted on joining us. She wanted to be part of our family special occasion. That was her. Nothing would get in the way. It was really important to Caroline that she can get a wedding gift for Mushki and Mendel that would be very personal. Not just any random gift off the wedding registry. Something special for the young couple, carefully chosen for them. And she got a snow globe, custom made especially for them. Though at the time she must have been feeling terribly unwell, she was there at the wedding, dressed to the nines, a bright smile on her face. She was so happy to be there. The last year and a half, was very tough on Caroline. And no less for her sole caregiver, Tony. All of it rested on his shoulders. I always wonder, as a rabbi, and visiting people, counseling people, who it's harder for? The one who's going through the pain or the family caring for them? Seeing their pain. 
seeing their loved ones suffer. They're both very difficult. And Tony's dedication to her, his unwavering and constant care, always evaluating her medical care, the facility she was in, never losing hope of bringing her home one day, though ultimately was not to be. The last time we saw Caroline was a few weeks before she passed away. Though she didn't respond much in speech, we did get a great smile out of her when we showed her a family photo. And more specifically, when she saw baby Shalom. And we did manage to get out of her what her favorite TV channel was. While her medical team was doubting her cognitive awareness at the time. Remember that? Caroline is not one to focus on her challenges and difficulties. More often than not, even during the most difficult months, taking interest in you, her family and her friends, wanting to be part of your lives, of your joys, and her neighbors, taking trips, trying to focus on life and joy, not the challenges and upheavals. Her joy always allowing her to soar above. In the Hasidic idiom, we have an expression, somebody who is able to walk a couple inches above the ground in the most positive and constructive way. That was Caroline. Not letting things get her down. And she had much that would. So I think it is so befitting that we're gathering here, commemorating her life as this was her spot. Her groove, the open sea, representing the endless expanses of joy and opportunities life brings. Each day was a new concept to cherish and develop, and certainly not to squander. Caroline has left a huge void behind her. It is up to her loved ones and her family and friends to continue her legacy of kindness, of love, and of joy. To know Caroline was to know kindness and joy all the time. It's customary that at a time like this when we say our farewell and pay our respects, to take a moment, a reflective moment, a quiet moment, to ask forgiveness from the person we're paying our respects to. Because inevitably in the course of life, we sometimes, without intention, offend, insult, or upset somebody. It does happen. And as part of saying goodbye, we ask forgiveness. So as you look at the water, take a moment of reflection to think about our relationship, and take a moment to ask that forgiveness as we are going to say our farewell. After the passing of a loved one, there is always thoughts in one's heart, I could have done more. I could have spent more time with them. I could have given them more attention. I could have made their life more comfortable. I could have been more attentive. And it's only natural to have those thoughts. And at the same time, it is true. We can never do enough, but we're human. There's no doubt in my mind that Caroline forgives, knows that our heart was in the right place and we try to do our best. And knowing her love, her care, her gentle kindness, there's no doubt that she forgives us as well. 
There is a Jewish tradition, which I want to draw your attention to, if not in the literal observance of it, but in the spirit of it. There's a custom that after losing a loved one, at the time, at the heat of the moment, one tears a garment. We call it in Hebrew, Korea. What is the meaning of that tradition? And I think it's significant and worth sharing. The idea is, we recognize, on the one hand, it's the release of grief. It's important for a person to grieve, to allow ourselves to cry and to mourn, because if we don't do it properly, one will never heal. One has to allow themselves the space and time to be by themselves and to mourn and to talk about their loved one and to cry about them. And that's on a simple level. But on a deeper level, there's something much more profound in the tearing of the garments. It is a statement that while the person was torn from us, the person passed on, we're no longer with them, we can't speak to them, we can't hug them. We recognize that it is only the external part of them that is torn from us, their body, their outer garment, if you will, their external trapping, but their soul, their spirit, what they represented, their love, that is all part of their spirit, part of their soul that's metaphysical, that remains with us forever. It's only the outer part that's taken away from us, but their spirit's still with us. So it's important to remember at this time that Caroline's spirit will forever be with us, will forever be with you, Tony. In Hebrew, we say, in Yiddish, we say she should be a good tabeter, she should be a good advocate for you on high with God. And no doubt that she'll continue to pray for you, to look after you, to care for you. And most importantly, you should remember her spirit, what she represented, and try to embody those values every day of our life. May she be a good advocate on high for her loved ones. May her spirit live on forever. God give you strength, resilience, and the ability to live every day like Caroline wanted to live, like she did live, realizing every day is an opportunity not letting the difficulties and the sadness of life get her down. That's what she wants you to do, Tony. I'm sure amongst the friends and family, somebody might want to share something. So if you want to just pick up your hand, come. If you can just clip this on. Just Something. Just on something. Onto your, onto your. Oops. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't. Is this? Does it need this part? Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. No, just holding it. Okay. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, a lot of people I know, like Jeff and Brenda, who helped Tony with my sister for a while, and then her best friend Maureen, and many, many, many other of you folks. Um, it's very tough. Um, at least I got to spend the last almost five years of her down in the family. Um, Carol and I used to always cut up all the time. It's different. I have to cut up with Tony now. <laughs> he don't like to cut up. But it's just been very difficult for me. Um, many people here have tried to get me through things, but I know I won't be all right, but I will because my husband will. But um, any of you come up, tell stories. I don't want anybody crying. I think we've all done that enough. We know how life is. But 
Carol talked about so many of you. I know who you are now. I get to put a face with a picture and name, but the memorial markers is something very, very important that I did for her. And um, Tony did a good write-up. And I hope you can treasure, treasure those. My sister-in-law was a big support to really help out. She's on the back of it. But anyway, that's all. I'll, I'll say a few words, and for, for, for a lot of you guys don't know me, but I'm the I'm the neighbor next door, and I'm the first to admit I'm not the greatest neighbor in the world because I'm never home. <laughs> uh, you know, I work 80 to 100 hours a week, and 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 in and out all the time. And a gator. And a gator. <laughs> Don't hold that against me. <laughs> but Caroline and I, I don't know how we developed our relationship, but it, it, it just kind of happened. I don't know, there was a TV show back in the, uh, in the 80s, I think it was, where the neighbors lived across the fence from each other and they <laughs> would speak to each other <laughs> across the fence. And, uh, and so that's how our, our relationship kind of started. And... Um, she used to text me all the time. I would text her when I could, but she would, you know, say, "There's birds on your boat. You need to get out there and and, and take care of that, or, or or this, or I I see you're on your boat today. Why it's too stormy? Why are you going out? <laughs> I saw that big fish you took off the boat. Can you bring some over? Something like that. Um, but um, no, all kidding aside some of the conversations that we had just in just across the fence texting out in the front yard or wherever uh, we talked about everything from I don't know life religion politics you name it and uh, and uh, I came to really <laughs> really cherish her and she was uh, she was she was quite a jewel and uh, Tony we'll, we'll miss her dearly I'd like to share this real quick just to tell you how Carol is. And I was introduced to her as Carol, not Caroline. So for the past 39 years, I've called her Carol. And we were all swimming in the pool one day, just kind of, you know, goofing around like we always did. And she looks at me and she says, that fresh water's starting to get high. And I says, what? She goes, the bay, that's fresh water. And I says, no, it's not. It's attached to the Gulf. That's salt water. She goes, no, it's not. And we argued for a good 20 minutes. She would not believe me, no matter what. I think until she finally said something to Tony, Tony said, no, that's salt water. She wouldn't believe me. She stood by her guns. And no matter what, that's just pretty much who she was. Her and I had some pretty intense conversations. They came up to our house for Christmas, and she had that on her bucket list. She wanted to spend time with family. I believe in my heart, she knew then. She did not have a lot of time left. Uh, my daughter Shannon and her husband Cody and her, their two children were there, Susan and I and Tony, and we were all together as a family. A big Christmas tree, passing out presents, the girls laughing, and i would never seen her so happy. She was just all lit up and she was practically carried into our house, sitting in a wheelchair, and she was just so lit up. My wife gave her, for Christmas, a blanket with all their different dogs they've had and pictures of her and Tony. And when, when Tony held that up for her, her eyes just, boom, that flash that she always had in her eyes, how those blue eyes lit up, that just made my heart happy. And we were all sitting around, and she happened to be in the other room, which is the girls' room. 
and she was just laying in the bed. And she told, I think Susan, she says, why is Kevin not back here? He hasn't come back here and talked to me. So she comes out and gets me. She goes, Carol thinks she's mad at her. So I go sit and I sit down and we must have talked for a good 45 minutes about everything. It didn't matter what. Mostly about her health. And she told me, she says, I don't know if I can beat this. And I says, you can beat that. You have the strength. Out of anybody I know, you can fight it. I says, you got to promise me right now, you'll fight it. And she told me, I'll fight it. I'll fight it to the end. And she did. So no matter what, I loved her to death, and she always made me proud. So that's all I got to say. Thank you all. My name is Maureen, and except for Carol's sister, uh, Susan, I think I've probably known her the longest than any of you here. We met, uh, uh, we were both from military families, so we met when uh, our fathers were stationed in Hawaii, and this was back, I think, in the 1800s, but we, um, uh, I, we were in seventh grade, and she was the new student coming in. There was a seat next to me, and she went to sit down, and I pulled it out. She fell on the floor, and that's how our friendship began. So, And she never let me forget that. So, But all through those years, uh, you could imagine from seventh grade to, to this, there's just so many things we went through, and uh, we went through a lot of grief, a lot of deaths of loved ones, and a lot of joyous things and uh, you know in our lives when we have friends that long loved ones that long we sometimes take them for granted that they're always going to be there and it's those people that are always there that are the real gifts and the real treasure and not that we took each other for granted, but it's, it's just those people that you know will always be there. And then when they're not, it's really a shock to you and a, a wake-up call that this is it, and this is how fast it goes and how fragile it all is. And as far as that last Christmas, I was trying to talk her out of visiting you because I knew how difficult that was for her. Health-wise, I know, but yet, like you said, Kevin, that's all she wanted to do was go there and be with the horses, and uh, exactly. On one base that we lived, we actually went horseback riding, and my horse ran away with me, and just went crazy while she stayed back. And I always remember looking back, thinking, "Oh my God, my friend is going to come and save me." I've never seen a person laugh so hard <laughs> as she did, as I thought my life was going to end. But uh, she truly was, in my whole life, just one of those people that was always there and will always be missed, will always be loved, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity just to share that. She was a good friend, a good person. You said no tears, so I can't go up there. <laughs> but I'll tell you the one thing, she had the biggest smile and the brightest eyes that everybody met, and I'm the new guy in the neighborhood. I just moved here five, six years ago, about the same time they moved in, and they were the best friends to me anybody could ask for somebody just off the street. And she would come hobbling down the street with her cane, and I always feel bad offering to give her a car ride back to her house because I was afraid she'd trip and fall. But she always had this huge smile and wanted to talk. And so we, I invited her and she said, oh no, your wife's not home, I can't come in. I said, yeah, you can, I said, don't worry about it. So we'd sit and talk and she was just a, a great human being. 
and I'll miss her terribly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol. I met Carol, and she was Carol number one. Uh, I mean, I was Carol number one, and she was Carol number two, so that our, our roommates wouldn't get us confused. I've, I met Carol in, at Miami Day Junior College many years ago. We've been friends for over 50 years. I was a bridesmaid at her wedding, followed her every place that she lived. You know, as soon as she got married, she went to London, and I followed them there after a little bit of time because my dad worked for Pan Am, <laughs> so I didn't have to pay much. But yeah, one thing, I'll say a funny thing about Carol. In college, she had a car at the University of South Florida, and I didn't. So we would, you know, go for a ride every now and then just to get away. Her favorite thing was to go to Krispy Kreme when the hot donuts was up. And that was her favorite thing, and I always remember that. It was just, that was it. But thank you. I'm Meg Wagner. We lived next door. We just moved to the old folks' home and sold our house. But um, we lived in that house for 50 years. And so when Caroline and Tony moved here, we've been there 45 years. And for many of those 45 years, I've been begging my husband to put a railing down our front steps so nobody would trip and fall or slip and fall. <laughs> and it was always down on his list of priorities. And I'll tell you, when Caroline decided something should get done, she was going to get it done. And so every time I would see her, she would say, have you talked to Lynn yet about getting a railing on those stairs? <laughs> and I would have to say, yes, but I'll go remind him again. So this went on for quite a few months, and finally, we have a railing on the front steps there. <laughs> but Caroline was a great neighbor. You know, it's, she didn't let her problems dictate her life. She was determined. I mean, she'd be out hauling the garbage can around or sweeping or something, and you know, when she was not real steady on her feet. And I probably would have been sitting in a chair with my feet up. So she was a great example of how to live beyond your circumstances. Um, she just never, never seemed to give up and was a great neighbor. So we're gonna miss her. Very nice. I guess uh, that's pretty much it. It's uh, This has been very powerful, and uh, especially want to thank the rabbi. He said many things that pulled a few tears out of my eyes, I'll tell you. Um, and I'm trying to be on my uh, most, you know, restrained uh, behavior so nobody will really know what I'm thinking. Um, but uh, this has uh, been a very meaningful time. And I suggest now we go in and make it meaningful in a different way and take advantage of all that food and drink and have a good time the way Caroline wanted. And don't forget the sun is coming down and her favorite time of day was sunset. And we might get a really good one tonight, so be sure to see it, okay? Because it's like she dialed it up for us after these last few days of storms and stuff. So but thank you so much again for coming. And thank you on those online that can't join us in person, but I hope you've got the flavor of it and we appreciate everything about all of you. So thank you again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Rabbi Korf. Thank you.
touch a lot of people in so many different ways, but there's a lot of common denominators that she touched people. You see a common thread. You know, people will talk about how she can let her. Life.